What up? It's your boy ONJJ Stone, aka Black Gritty, aka O Doctor, whatever you want to call me out here in these streets. Uh, my family's good. It's Valentine's Day, so I got to get this show out of the way so I can go do what I got to do with the rest of my day. Hopefully, you have a great one too. Philly is good ish, even though uh, Harden was supposed to possibly start tomorrow, hopeful thinking, but his injury is uh, keeping him out. <laughs> so we won't see him until after the All Star break. And uh, apparently they're going to be replacing him in the All-Star game too, but neither here nor there. I was going to hold off and do a Super Bowl slash Harden show after I saw him play tomorrow night, but since he's not playing, I can go ahead and bang this Super Bowl out of the way and get you an episode of Gritty Nights up in here. So uh, got a video show now. Check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe. It's going to be live when I do these shows now, so you can come in, hop in, throw in some comments, correct me, fix me, do whatever I got to do. Subscribe, like, share, all that jazz. The Super Bowl. So leading up to the Super Bowl, it was the least exciting, least cared about Super Bowl ever. First of all, I got Thomas, I can't stand his punk ass Brady, retiring, unretiring, re-retiring, think about retiring, come get me because I don't want to retire. If you got a good enough team, I'll come out for you retiring. Suck the air out of everything, okay? Then trade deadline blockbuster, Philadelphia 76ers going out here and getting James Harden. Shut down all the football talk for the whole day, day and a half, really. Uh, then on top of that, you got the Scooby McDoobie Olympics that nobody watches down 55% viewership. But that other 45%, they out there viewing. They love the cold weather and people out there skating and, and shooting and booting and whatever it is they do in the Olympics. I have not watched them in a good eight, nine years. One day I'll talk about that because the Olympics are down bad and they need help. Help globally for viewership. But uh, so that took away from the Super Bowl buzz, Super Bowl vibe, like things just coming and going and just taking the air out of it. Mix that into bought super team football and new Bengals upstart. Only a couple big names on the team that you know and like already love. So the fervor wasn't there. Now, you already know by listening to this, the Rams won the Super Bowl. I don't want to hear no Rams fans. I don't want to see no Rams fans. I don't believe in you. I seen the Rams pep rally, brother. I know that was only 32 people out there for the Rams pep rally. And nobody else is out there. So I don't care what you say. Ain't really no Rams fans. We all know every time there's a Rams game, it is literally, this is not a joke, minimum 60-40. Sometimes 70-80-20. When the 49ers were there, that was a 49ers home game. When the Eagles ever go out there, it is an Eagles home game. On the TV, I can hear them chanting. I can hear the chants every time somebody plays them. There's not enough fans there to bolster them, and hopefully this Super Bowl does something for them. You know, all the stars came out. Yeah, I mean, LeBron was out there. Literally everybody you could think of in their mom, and then everybody else who's marketing was out there. So, And the the fans seem to be more Bengal central than Ram central, which would still hold true because the Rams don't really have fans. They have L.A. posers and front runners. And uh, a lot of mad people from St. Louis that are just angry that they left them. So that's how that works. I digress to the game. It was a good game. Nine call, uh, touchdown, giving up early. Refs were not calling really anything. No penalties except for the dude that was in street clothes running out there celebrating with the team like a dummy. They waited until the end of the game to be flag central. Pissed me off because I'm like, you let him play this whole game. People was tugging and bugging. And, yes, I know that Ramsey gave up that touchdown. There was like a face mask, and that shouldn't have been called. But for the most part, they were letting him play. So if you were doing that, then they were doing that, and we were doing that. I mean, it wasn't no false starts. wasn't no holding. And I know there was holding on Aaron Donald. I saw it. I, I, I saw it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Having a business in the first half, the reason you kept him off him was holding and, and triple teaming him, triple beaming him. But it was a good game. I mean, no skin in the game. It was a good game. Came down to the wire. Came down to a final drive. Came down to a comeback drive. Uh, I don't know how you don't cover Cooper Cup. I don't understand how 
you don't put a jumbo line in to get one yard. It, again, they're young. Burrow's young. And he is smooth and cool. I mean, this brother is an honorary brother. I saw him out there lip singing some Kid Cudi songs. There was, one of them was an obscure Kid Cudi song. I didn't even remember that song. And my man was out there mouthing it word for word. I'm like, oh, you down, Burrow. Burrow is down, in case you didn't know. It ain't, it ain't just the gold chains and the puffy jackets and the shades. That Ohio boy is an Ohio boy. And if you know some Ohio boys, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, much respect to him. Played his heart out. Gave his best. The O-line did nothing for him. He was decimated. He, he was crushed and still hung in there. Still played tight. It, it was just hard. McVay lucked out and won the Super Bowl. I mean, if OBJ was in the game, didn't get hurt, they would have blew him out. You could see it. If they couldn't handle it. But once OBJ went out, McVay went back to his whole I don't really run the ball. I'm just going to keep throwing this ball. And he's lucky to cup his cup. And Stafford is a comeback dude because Stafford tried to give away two interceptions like he does. Like I said, Stafford going to Stafford. I talked about it before. He showed up in this game. Now, that one interception wasn't his. Can we make a rule that if the ball hits you in your chest, not even just your hands, if the ball hits you in the top portion of your torso, and the ball bounces off your face mask, off of your hands, off of your chest. That interception is on the receiver. Can we stop giving these receptions to quarterbacks when it is not their fault? It looks horrible in the stat line. I'm looking at the stat line. It don't even feel like that. The one that he threw up, that's like a punt. It was third and whatever long. He went for the gusto. He lost it. Stafford be doing that. Like I said, he be giving you chances. But that one interception was just garbage, and I can't stand it. Good game. Chase ended up with, you know, 89 yards, five receptions. Higgins had 100 yards, four receptions. They like big plays. They did not like the dink and dunk lifestyle. Mixon came in there and ran for 72. She gave him the ball a little bit more in that jumbo package. I like that jumbo package. They, they pushed him around when they came out there to a couple plays with that. So I really did like that jumbo package. But, again, young coach, young quarterback, young team, no offensive line. Good game. You saw it. I'm not going to recap it. I'm not going to rehash it, but I will go into the future. Let's talk about the Bengals first. <laughs> Joe Burrow's going to be here for another 10 years. He could be the next Tom Brady. He could be the next Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> no, he can't. No, he can't. I'm looking you dead in the eye in this camera. Joe Burrow is not going to be Patrick Mahomes. I'll tell you However many reasons why. I'm, just, I'm coming on top of the dome. This is just what I know about football. You could agree, disagree, tell me I'm wrong, but this is just what I'm saying off the top of my dome. Straight out the gate, you went four and whatever because you got hurt. You got a last place schedule, which means your schedule was easy. The Ravens got injured. Steelers had been. The Browns are the Browns. <laughs> okay? Now, the Ravens going to get back on track. Now, I know Lamar ain't the biggest throw in the world, but you damn sure he going to be in the playoffs. That's one more against you in your own division. The other two ain't going to be in there with you. I mean, but shout out to Tom. Uh, Tom I know Tom going to bang up when the season's always. But I'm saying you got to worry about the Ravens in the playoffs and that ground and pound and defense. Then you got to worry about, oh, and all they need is an offensive line. All they need is an offensive line. Yeah, all you need is an offensive line. You got $50 million under the cap. Who are you? Who they? What they keep saying? Who they? Who they? Who are you? You are the Cincinnati Bengals. Your owner is a piece of trash that keeps money in his pocket. He is not going to go out and buy you an offensive line. He's not going to go out there and spend that fifty million dollars. He's going to go in this draft because they keep all the draft picks and build through the draft. Now, it's great that you built through the draft. I believe in building through the draft. But when you're in striking distance, go spend this money. Go get some help. If you gave this guy a line. Maybe then I, I, I'd agree with you. But so far, I told you the week schedule last year is not going to be the same. The owner's a piece of trash. Didn't get a Palmer no help. Didn't want to spend no money for Palmer when he needs certain things. Seven times the playoffs didn't get nowhere. Third, <laughs> it's the AFC, sucker. <laughs> Burrow going to have to go through again. Now, again, you did one time, cool. Tom Brady ain't win every year. You know what I mean? Peyton got a couple in there. You know? so, but I'm just saying. So then you got to go through again. Mahomey, Allen, Herbert might even get up there. They spend a little bit more money, get him a little bit more help. Like, 
the, the Titans, if they can flip and dip and get another quarterback, I mean, they still going to be there, but I just ain't got to worry about Tannehill. Tannehill don't scare me for nothing. I mean, I, I go to sleep at night, you know what I mean, with, 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 with cupcakes and stuff when I think about Tannehill. He puts no fear in my heart, you know what I mean? And they, they even got a new running game. They got eight new running backs now, so they're going to be potent and be back. I'm just saying, Burrow getting back there, it's not guaranteed. And they better do it soon because he's on this rookie deal. And Burrow going to be worth that money, boy. Murray out here asking for money. Fool, you ain't even done nothing yet. You want money. I'll talk about that, too, at the end. Remind myself, Cardinals, speak on it. But, uh, yeah, Burrow, the Bengals, good showing. Great to be there. Uh, great run, great playoff run. Survived 90 billion sacks. This dude is going to get crushed if they don't get him aligned. And I don't mean through the draft. You better trade somebody. You better get somebody. Get three people there. Because that's what I couldn't even say about last year's Super Bowl. It was so demonstrative to watch Patrick Mahomes run for his life when he was down four linemen. It was like, oh, the Tampa Bay defense is so great. I'm like, they're down four linemen. Of course the defense looks good. So, Burrow going back. <laughs> good luck on that. Let me know what you think about the Bengals getting back ASAP Rocky. Again, they ain't in my division, so I don't care. I got to worry about the birds getting somewhere. But I'm just saying, it ain't going to be that easy for the Bengals to get back. Now on to the Rams. The Rams. Bought and paid for. Rams, you almost ducked that game up a couple of times, brother. You out here guessing and, and just, ooh, gambling. You was gambling out here in these streets with your life. And they was burning you, boy. Oh, you got lucky. Oh, yeah. Let's say about the Bengals. I'm not going to say nothing about it because it's disrespectful to me. But, I mean, I, I don't like Eli Apple anyway, but he should never open his mouth. The whole internet is going after him at 50 Cent today. It's just Apple and 50. 50 apples. That's all we talking about today. It's just crazy how they are destroying that man. I mean, I, I'm seeing a female analyst just ripping it to him. Too. I'm like, girl, just do your job. You ain't got to get on this man like that. Just leave him alone. He's already dead. Have you not seen the dead body? Back to the Rams. Stafford got a ring. OBJ got a ring. Miller got another ring. Ramsey got a ring. And uh, I like all those guys. I like Ramsey back when he was talking smack. He stopped doing it when he got to a good team. Respectable. Shut your mouth. Get your money. Do your job. But he used to say the most outlandish shit. And it was it was fabulous. It was fabulous to listen to that dude talk. It was just one of the highlights of my life. Just wait for him to be like rolling his eyes and all. Oh, he used to talk some good shit, boy. He used to talk some good shit. I miss it. But he got a ring. Good for him. Stafford. Always loved Stafford Megatron. Now he got white Megatron. But I always loved watching him play because I had to suffer through Thanksgivings. And he was like one of the only highlights for a good five-year run, eight-year run on Thanksgiving because they always put the dang gum lines on. They suck. So thank goodness they had Matthew Stafford to air it out and throw some bombs over Baghdad. He deserves a ring. Good for him. Von Miller. Hey, jumped on board right time. Made some good plays. Hey, you got another one. Good for you. Donald is a beast. Now, my buddy uh, Ferguson always talking about how whenever you watch him in primetime games, he never shows up. And I literally say every time, like, but, bro, watch the trenches. He's being doubled and triple teamed. Yeah, he doesn't show up. The Super Bowl, he was getting double teamed and triple teamed until they started moving some stuff around. The same thing they did in the – um championship game late in the game they started moving miller around moving him to the end and, and bringing other people and doing shifts which got him one-on-ones and they did that in the second half after the little sideline thing where the dude punched him in the neck and then he just went down on he just went beast mode on everybody picking dudes up putting them on skates and he was just relentless in the backfield and he deserved it he deserved it he deserved it what he doesn't deserve is to be put above lawrence taylor again i am not a giants fan I am not. I hate the fucking Giants. I hate them. But Lawrence Taylor put fear in grown men's heart. Lawrence Taylor had people literally, not it's not figurative, let me say, uh -huh, I can't go to sleep tonight thinking about how I'm going to block. Dudes were, were drawing up maps and building dams to stop this dude. Grown men feared him. In that era, I, I, I will credit this to Stephen A. Somebody texted him and said, in that area, other greats thought that he was the greatest. 
and that's true. Uh, now when you think of great defensive linemen, at least, or great defensive players, Von Miller was it for like a year. He had a good year. That was a Super Bowl run year, uh, the two years. The Legion of Boom has some guys mixing it out, but guys don't stay around. Now you, you might think about Bosa or something like that, but it's far and few between Young, Chris Young um, in Washington. Like, it's far and few between great defensive guys. The, the long arc gone to the stray hands and all that kind of stuff where, you know, Reggie White's – the list goes on and on, but he's not better than Lawrence Taylor. He's just not. I'm sorry. I'm not having it. I'm not listening to it. I don't care about it, but he is great. He is dominant. He has earned it. And then he was like, I might retire. That means I want to check. He's not going to retire. You can't, you can't be pushing dudes around like that in the Super Bowl and then tell me you're going to retire and have me believe you. There's no way in the world I'm thinking you're going to retire. It's impossible. But he want that check, though. So extend my man. Get him his money. He deserves it. He earned it. Back-to-back Super Bowls, home teams, getting that win. I guess I'm going to go throw my money on Arizona. <laughs> That's if they got a quarterback. Now, the NFL, as I spoke about a couple weeks ago, is in trouble with this lawsuit. They don't hire black people. They don't respect black people. They put out things in the media about black coaches, owners, players. I know it well because they did it to Deshaun Jackson. Wanted to get rid of him. He's a gang member. He's thugging and bugging in the streets. Never was arrested for it. Never was uh, committed of anything. Never was suspected of anything. But the Eagles leaked it out to the media. Makes me sick. Can't stand it. Now, Murray takes stuff off of social media, all the, all the Cardinals off of social media. Now it's he's uh, immature, hard to work with, irresponsible. That's the team coming out saying that. Not players. The team. Because he wants money. And he wants his, his deal done sooner than later. So better to tarnish him and make him learn a lesson. Instead of keeping your mouth shut, instead of trying to leak stuff to the media. And again, if he's if he's uh, irresponsible, a pain in the butt, whatever, he's a 24-year-old, 23-year-old millionaire in the NFL, and he's a quarterback. Sorry if he's a little bit of a diva. Sorry if he thinks he's special. I mean, the whole world treats this dude like he's special. And he was special. They were 8-1. and one. And his only problem is Hopkins went down. If Hopkins wouldn't have went down, Trust you me, he would have threw for more than 137 yards in the playoffs, okay? He would have been running around looking for his life. Hopkins saved that man. They made good moves to get him help. Unfortunately, couldn't stay healthy. But here they go, trying to tarnish somebody, trying to make him look bad again, though, right? He's hard to work with. He's a problem. It, it just, it, and I'm not trying to make it a black and white thing, dude, but I, I swear, yo, rich white dudes love just pulling this whole Black dude with an attitude, just shut up and shuck and jive shit. I can't stand it. And you see it coming a mile away. Everybody like, oh, we're going to get him. We, we should trade for him. We should go get him. He ain't going nowhere. They traded away their other first-round quarterback who sucked. And I don't even know if he's dead or alive. Is he, is he in witness protection? I forget the dude's name. Jocelyn, Joslyn, whatever his name is. They got rid of the coach after one year, brought in this dude from college who'd never been in the NFL, looked like he had stars in his eyes when he hit the playoffs. So they ain't getting rid of him. They're going to pay him his money. Now they're just going to try and pay him less because he's a problem. He's a troublemaker. He's a rabble rouser. Okay. All right. Let's keep that storyline going. But it's the NFL. It is what it is. Texas hired a black coach. Dolphins hired a um, African. That's what I call mixed people. Don't get mad at me. It just is what it is. My daughter's one of them. <laughs> African American. But um, <laughs> you know, they're they're trying their best, though, and they're doing things. They're, they're bringing people in, and they're just trying to get them where they go. Whatever, pandering. I appreciate it. I guess whatever. But I don't like what the Cardinals are doing with Murray. And uh, when I take him, not for three first round draft picks, because apparently he's a headache. I might give you one in a couple of seconds. You know what I'm saying? That's the other thing, too. If you had to get rid of him, you're devaluing him by putting this stuff out in the media. I don't understand. I know It's an old tactic, an old narrative, but I don't understand why they do it. So that's weird. Is there anything else that's important to me today? Let me short episode. Like I said, I just want to talk about Super Bowl. I won money. I, uh, I took the Rams uh, a month ago. And then I took uh, the Bengals with a couple of parlays and I lost. 
but I made some, I made a good chunk of change. So I'm all right. I'm not too super upset about the end of the game with flags being thrown and calls being called that I didn't agree with at all and put them on the line. Again, you had to stop Cup. You knew it was going to him. You couldn't stop him. That dude's got the best feet, got the best routes. I mean, I mean, I want, I want to give it up to Stafford, but I mean, like you, when you throw into a dude like that, that's always getting himself open from, I guess, play design. I guess I could McVay that too. The play design, his feet, his movement, and then Stafford getting it to him. Ugh, it, it was just, it was impressive. It's like when you play a video game against your nephew or something, and you're just killing him. And he's like, "How do you do it? I know what you're gonna do. How are you doing it? I'm, I'm rolling all my coverage there. How are you doing it? Because I'm just better than you, young Thundercat. I know the moves. I know the game." And Cup knows the game. He deserved the MVP. I wish I'd have put money on him for that. I just, in my mind, I, I, I took, in my, my one part, I took a, a OBJ and I took Stafford and another one just because I thought they were going to roll all their covers to Cup and OBJ was going to be balling out of control like he's been in the playoffs, which he was on his way doing until he went down. Um, I didn't speak that much about OBJ, but again, he was a former Giant, didn't like him, appreciated his talent. Uh, his whole suspect attitude and lifestyle on a boat, never did anything after they went on a boat, got out of Cleveland. Shout out to his dad. Fathers matter. Whenever you talk to these athletes and you ask them what they want to, uh, who they want to thank, they always thank their mom, man. You better thank your dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many times is somebody in your life talk shit and fuck up a situation for you where they just be a boss or a coworker or another family member or a friend and your wife come in and say something, your dad come in and say something and just full out embarrassing. Well, I, you ain't like that. Mo- no way. So why are you out here trying to be friends with him? You know, she slept with your sister. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like they just come and say something crazy. Just mess it up. OBJ's dad came through and was like, yo, it's not my son. It's this dude that's trash. Like the, look at the dude. My son is fighting for his life out here, man. He's fighting for his life. Got his son free, and shout out to him for going to the right team. Deshaun Jackson, you should have just stayed on the team. They could have used you. They were down Wood. They were down OBJ. You could have just sat there, collected your check, and you'd be a Super Bowl champion right now, but your ego got in the way. Sorry, DJ. You're still one of my favorite players ever. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget you, what you did for the Eagles. Never forget what you did. I mean, we ain't win nothing, but you look good while you was out there, brother. Appreciate that. Um, I guess that's it. I'm your boy, Black Gritty. Subscribe on uh, iTunes, Spotify. I don't even know if we're going to be on Spotify right now. But anywhere you can get your podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel. The show will be going live. There'll be a call in live. Y'all can call it. We're going to be hollering. We're going to be chitting. We're going to be chatting. I just got to get the foundation laid. And if you're on audio, I appreciate you. I really do. Got a lot of people on audio right now, so I just appreciate them because they out there, they already subscribed. I'm your boy, Owen J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Black Gritty. It's been another Gritty Nights. Until I get